Okay, I'm going to introduce to you uh, what the derivative is, and this is one of the key concepts of calculus. Um, so here I, I've used the uh, good old f of x equals x squared. Um, you know, really simple function we all know it, and it's you'll see it in examples a lot. So um, what I want you to pay attention here, actually, the first thing before I even get into that is. You know, one of the things you're going to have to be able to do in calculus is express things as variables, um, even even when you know their values, um, and that's what we're going to do because calculus is pretty much, well, I mean, it's really the study of change. Um, so you're you're going to be, you know, things are going to vary, variables. Um, so it would make sense that you'd have to, uh, um, you know, get a skill developed at writing um, expressions, functions, um, in terms of variables and not constants. So now we do have that right here. Um, we have x squared. But uh, let, let's see here. Like take for instance this point right here. Okay. Well we know that's point one one. But let's if we were to express express this point generically right here, um, what would we do? Well it would be it would be x f of x, right? Which is x squared. So I'm just going to write x squared right there. And if I wanted to go up there and uh, check this point up, well, let me call that one x. But let's shift x over h units, just like we did in the uh, limiting process in the other video. And I'm going to call this region right here h units, okay? H units. We're going to go over H units. So this new uh, little tick mark right there. Well, what's that going to be then? What's our new? What's our new guy then? If we move, if we if we're at X and we move over uh, X units, it's going to put us at X plus H, won't it? And whenever you do that, make sure you write x plus h um, and put it as a quantity. So let me just go ahead and draw up here. Now let's say I'm interested in finding the slope um, right here. Okay? Um, just the average rate of change is technically what we'll be finding. So I'm just going to uh, find the, the slope, the rate of change, in between these two points right here. Okay? My graph isn't looking, it's not looking as good, but it's, it'll, it'll be, it should be good enough, okay? Well, first of all, let me go up and let me define this, this other point then. Well, if this one was x, x squared, then this one's going to be, the x coordinate is going to be x plus h, isn't it? And then the y coordinate is going to be x plus h squared. You see how I got that? Here's our original function, and here here's the uh, x x and y is pretty much what this is, x and y, and that's the same thing here as x and y. I just moved over x or h units. I get x plus h. I get x plus h squared. Okay. So um, now that we know that, let's go back to algebra and just remember what slope is. That's just y two minus y one over x2 minus x1 and also know that, notice that on this particular axis this coordinate plane y's are the same as as f of x the, the f of x's okay so knowing that let's go ahead and let's see if we can't take this right here this uh, you know set of points we got and I'm actually gonna write them down here See, here's our set of points. You know, this could be like uh, point two, and this could be point one, really, if you think about it. So, so if I go back up there, and if I just want to find the slope of this line that I drew here, um, this is basically what I'd use, right? 
Well, we know a little bit more information about our y's and x's than we do right here. This is just basically the uh, slope formula. Okay, so you know we're gonna take it take it a little bit uh, further um, with this, and we're just gonna go ahead and uh, find the slope um, using our new point. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll just use um, you know y two minus y one, and and here here's y two. And here's minus y1. So let me go ahead and do that. So okay, and then I'm going to divide it by x2 minus x1. And x2, here's just my other point. It just looks a little weird, but it's just a regular point like everything else. Okay. So I got that, and I'm going to divide it by another thing I'm going to draw over here. You might have seen it like that before. Okay, so now I got this. And of course, this thing is going to go ahead and simplify a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and uh, if we remove the parentheses, which we can do, this is actually just going to be. over h, right? And depending what the x is and the h's are, uh, we can kind of compute uh, what, what the actual slope of this. But, but remember, like I said at the beginning of the video, we want to express things in sort of a uh, generic, kind of arbitrary uh, way. And this is certainly a way of doing this right now. Yeah, if I plug in some x values here, um, you know, if I use like one and two, I, I would get some actual real numbers here instead of variables. But um, a lot of times in calculus, um, that's not going to be the case. You know, we're going to want to express things um, in, in a real kind of arbitrary fashion like we did right here. Well, this is the slope, okay? And if you recall back to our limits video, um, when, when I kind of engaged the limiting process, what we ended up doing, we kind of just shrank h down to zero, right? And as, and as h shrank to zero, it kind of somewhat brought our second x value, kind of brought it back over towards uh, our, our point of interest, didn't it? Okay? So at, at the closer h, uh, actually, let me write this up here. So we got x and we get x plus h. Well, the closer h gets to zero, the closer uh, x is going to be to x. You know, say x1 and we have x sub 2. Well, you know, we got two different x values, but it, the only real difference between them is, you know, the h that I've tacked on here. So as this goes to zero, um, these are pretty much going to end up being the same point, and they will actually exactly be the same point, you know, if we take it far enough. So, um, if you need a refresher, just go back to the uh, limiting process and some of my limit videos. Uh, some of them are kind of crude, but I'm trying to kind of clean that up. But basically, if we want if we want the derivative at this point right here, p1, I'm just going to have to shrink this uh, this uh, length right here down to just about nothing. Okay, and in order to do that, we're just going to take in this case we want to shrink h down to nothing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, let me crumple that out, we're going to shrink h down to zero in this case. Okay, so this is, um, this is a, a pretty important part right here because this is actually the formula that gives us the derivative. Now it's kind of nasty right now, but, um, and, and you won't be using this a whole lot, but this this is how we arrive at this formula. And in my next video, we're going to actually uh, calculate this slope. Okay, so um, you know we'll just uh, pick up in the next video. Okay, thanks.